Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us for our show again this week. We are very happy there are people like you out in our community, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. Because it really is important for good government to have a back and forth flow of information between the people that live in the city and the people that are governing the city and the people that work for your city. So we're glad that you're interested in the issues that are going on. Now we're in campaign season, so of course issues are important in another wider sense in terms of who you want to vote for, for your city council people and for your mayors. So we're stressing during this time with different candidates so that you can have more information when you go to vote. And of course, we want to encourage you to be sure to take the time to vote. And we've, if you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have information on from one of the nine cities in Northwest Community Television's viewing area. And we'll also encourage you to take down the names, the emails, the phone numbers of the people on our program. We'll have people on our program tonight from Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center, and Maple Grove. And if you're in one of those cities, particularly take down their information so that you can be in contact with them with any questions you might have or any ideas you might have. So we're very happy tonight to be getting down to the last few weeks before the election and we've saved this time for our mayor candidates. So we're very happy tonight. We've got uh, Jeff Lundy from Brooklyn Park. We've got uh, Tyler Annette from Mabel Grove and we've got Mike Elliott from Brooklyn Center. So we're very happy to have all of you with us tonight. I told them ahead of time to be ready and prepared to introduce themselves rather than my having to introduce them, but introduce themselves out to you. We will start with Jeff Lundy. Yep. And I'll let you tell people out in Brooklyn Park especially, but yep. our wider audience too, about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, senior resident uh -huh. of Brooklyn Park, uh, married to a uh, wife, Jody, uh, proud father to two sons, uh -huh. uh, Joshua and Jedrick. Uh, very getting involved in lacrosse, so that's kind of uh -huh. our lives at this point. I've been uh, privileged to be mayor for the last uh, three and a half years. Uh, unfortunately, filling in the term uh, with the passing of Mayor Lampy. Oh, right. And right. then prior to that, I was a city council member. I've also in the past been a member of the Hennepin County Library Board, member planning commission. So been active in city politics mm -hmm. and uh, more importantly, knowledgeable about the stuff that's in front of us. And then I asked you to think about issues because that's what our program deals yep. with. But t think about maybe you can share some ideas about uh, a couple of issues, two or three, that you think are important for the voters to know about. Tell us about them and what you'd like to see done. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a few issues and there's many things important oh, in right. uh, Broken Park. But you know, one of the things that I've said is that you know how many candidates have said I'm going to lower crime. Right. And uh, I'm here to tell people that you know crime is lower than it's been in 20 years in Brooklyn mm. Park, despite having 25,000 more residents. I think those are the kind of results I like to drive. We, you know, second thing is about jobs. Uh, in our city, we have a, it's a kind of a sleepy residential area, uh -huh. and we've been truly trying to drive jobs, economic development, ah. and we're doing that. Uh, we are one of the leaders in the metro in driving job growth. We're proud of that, and our goal is to lead the metro in job growth for 10 years. Uh -huh. And so we, you know, I'm a goal-setting person. Okay. Um, We've also tried it very hard to make our community stronger through strong neighborhoods. Uh -huh. uh, we say if a neighborhood is strong and they're connected and they're, they know each other, good things happen. The opposite is, if they're uh -huh. not, bad things happen. <laughs> right, and right. so we put a lot of effort into that. Uh -huh. um, you know, and as mayor, uh, when there's tough issues in front of the city, I've always tried to tackle them. We've okay. opened a teen homeless shelter. We found out there was a sex trafficking ring in our city. Oh, we tackled right, it head on, right. doing something that uh, the first homeless shelter outside of the urban core. Right. Uh, We've done things like tackle the golf course. So, you know, I think the third thing for me is this tough issues need to be tackled. They need to be tackled okay. in the public. And that's what I've tried to do. And, and maybe you could talk a little bit, because I know that Brooklyn Park over a period of time have introduced a lot of new measures through their police department. Yeah. Yep. Maybe you can tell us about them a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we've tried to understand is you know, we've had higher youth crime than uh, most cities. Okay. And what we discovered, it's not handcuffs. It's uh -huh. hope. And so if we can bring hope to those kids, uh, good things happen. 
Ah. Very simple idea. And so using things like Zane Wood, the community center, we've said, hey, we've driven participation, so 60% up. Uh, youth crime has gone down 40%. We think there's a link. Uh -huh. And so our police department's fully engaged with the idea that it is not handcuffs and guns that okay. lower crime. It's when citizens are engaged, when youth have good things, we can lower crime. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of our mantra has been is it's not the jail that drives uh -huh. crime down. It's actual people doing the right things before we encounter them. And then you talked about bringing jobs to your city. Can you give us some examples? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things, you know, we've got Target. That's mm -hmm. a one. It's kind of a buzz. Of, you know, people talk about Target as if uh, it's a bad thing. It's a great thing. Uh -huh. Uh, we have Baxter, we have Olympus, we have global companies moving to Brooklyn Park. We're focused on development, we try to be job friendly, because uh, we know that the long-term future of our city depends on diversifying our tax base. Right. Um, you know, and I, people talk about what are you trying to do, you know, I look at, you know, any city would kill to ah, have Target, any right, city, right, right. to have that development. We're proud right. they're here. And uh, so they're going to help drive growth on 610. I think I would ask any person in Brooklyn Park, if you want to know what's happening, mm -hmm. take a drive down 81, go up to 610, and you will see development that is not being seen anywhere in the metro. And then, then you mentioned, um, I think you said something about pulling people together. Or, yeah. Because Brooklyn Park is a fairly diverse city, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It is. Uh, it is diverse and it's diversity uh -huh. um, you know we have uh, it's not just uh, uh, you know two different groups it's multiple groups uh -huh. and so we've said is we need to engage everybody uniquely uh -huh. and uh, in their own each way uh, one example I like to talk about is uh, our librarian population which we're quite proud to be the right. world's largest librarian state outside right. Liberia uh, I traveled to Liberia as mayor uh -huh. on my own dime cool. because I knew that it would allow me to connect with the residents uh -huh. and uh, we take that you know, uh, tack with everyone. Okay. Is that different groups? We're the largest Vietnamese city in the state of Minnesota. Uh -huh. I didn't know uh, that. And so yeah. neither did I yeah. until a month ago. And so what we say is each, you know, group needs to be engaged in their own unique uh -huh. way. And so we take that very seriously and uh, we know it takes work. It doesn't happen. Oh, overnight. right, right. And then all of you, I'm sure, have been out door knocking. Yeah. Um, what kinds of things are you hearing from people as you do door knocking? Because yeah. you've got things that you want to share with them, but what are they wanting to share with you? Yeah, and I think we have a, my campaign is a simple uh, motto for it, and it goes like this. Anytime, any place, anywhere, anybody, any question, we knock on all doors. Okay. Uh, we don't walk around with lists and just hit doors that people might be friendly to us. Uh. Everything. <laughs> I right. knock on any door. Uh, and we answer any question. And so what I've been hearing from people is they feel the direction of the city is good. Okay. It's not perfect, but people feel that there's a sense that we are heading in the right direction. Okay. They notice the development. They feel the neighborhoods. They feel that the city is doing things differently. Uh -huh. They feel less crime. And so the feedback I've been getting at the doors from everybody okay. is that they like where we're headed. They know that we have challenges. And so I'm pretty blunt and honest with those. And right. uh, we're going to address them. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different issues in all of our yep. cities right now Absolutely. that need working on. And then I wanted to give you some time to tell the people out in Brooklyn Park mm -hmm. why they should vote for you come November 4th when Absolutely. they go into the election booth. Absolutely. And I, I think uh, my campaign is built on many things. One is that results matter. Okay. Uh, I am not about talk and promises. I am about what do you get done. And I say to people that I will put the results we've done, the, the lower crime, the more jobs, the engagement of youth, uh -huh. the realization that we are a diverse city and we need to be diverse in our outlook, uh, the idea that there are things that we need to do that sometimes people aren't going to like the outcomes, oh, but right. need to be done, right. uh, that we're going to continue on that. And so that as mayor, I've always been forthright in saying, here's where I stand, and I'll engage with anybody to talk about these issues. Even people I don't agree with, love to have those conversations. Uh -huh. And so I think looking forward, we have many tough choices. We have a light rail discussion that we're going to pick up. Oh, right, And right. what we're going to do, if I'm elected uh, mayor, is to have that community discussion. Okay. And decide as a community what do we want to be, where do we want to, uh, our decision to be. And people know that uh, working with me in the past that I will approach that open and honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, even if people don't agree, they'll get the same attention as somebody who does agree. And then I mentioned to all three of you, 
and I think I'll stick, stick it in here. What's something about Brooklyn Park that you would not want to see changed? Because yep. it's so good it should stay like it is. Yeah, I think the th for me, it's I wouldn't change the history of it. Okay. Because we are here where we are because of our experiences. Mm -hmm. And some people are like, oh, I wish we wouldn't have built so many apartments. I wish we wouldn't have done this. You know what? We're here where we are. Uh, we are stronger for it. Uh -huh. uh, we are heading the right direction. And uh, so I take things as they're given, not as I wish they'd be. Now we'll move on to Taylor Annette, who is running for mayor in the city of Maple Grove. Yes. And now remember, if you're in Maple Grove, to take down his contact information so that if you've got questions or ideas to share with him, I'm sure you would like to have that, right? I definitely would. I'd encourage anybody to reach out with any questions, comments, mm -hmm. or anything that you have. So, and I appreciate the invitation mm -hmm. and being here, and I think it's important to get the message out and have educated voters. Right. So, we'll start with you and let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience, but sure. most particularly to the people in Maple Grove. Certainly. Well, again, my name is Tyler Annette, and I am running for Mayor Maple Grove. Mm -hmm. I've been a Maple Grove resident for over 30 years. Ooh. Uh, actually, going back, I've, I've seen all this agricultural land when I was growing up turned into developments, whether it's housing, retail, uh, and so forth, businesses. Uh, I went to Winnecke Elementary School oh. in District 279 before we had built a bunch of new uh, schools in the right. area. So right. I actually went to elementary school in New Hope, but oh. we were bust out there before we got right. some right. of these great new schools. Uh, was in the first class at Maple Grove Junior High oh. to enter there and then uh, graduated from Osseo High School before Maple Grove High School had even uh -huh. been constructed. So uh, went through District 279 my whole life, uh, vested in the community. I'm a local attorney. I have uh, my own private law practice. Okay. Uh, I've been an attorney for 11 years and uh, I've been in both the private and the public sector. Uh, I've worked with the county attorney's office uh, as well as uh, being a, a private defense mm -hmm. attorney. Uh, family law issues, worked with townships, uh, worked with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, so have different uh, experience with different jurisdictions okay. from federal to township to county uh, and so forth. So I have a wife, two beautiful children, young huh? children, and uh, again just a lifelong resident. We set up our roots here after we got married and when I got older and uh, we plan to to make it our home for the future. Okay, thank you. Yes. And now you know the questions that we're gonna move on to is the issues that you see or that you're wanting to move forward or have people think about in terms of the election in Maple Grove. Sure. You know, for me, it's really more of a, having a more people-based government. Okay. Uh, Maple Grove, obviously with our demographic and whatnot and with the business and obviously Money Magazine a couple of weeks ago came out as with Maple Grove being the number two place huh. in the country to live. Yeah. Uh, so that was obviously a positive. Right. What I mean about community-based government is right now in Maple Grove and especially from uh, going around and door knocking and, and different things and hearing from the community members is a focus on the gravel pit area, the Arbor Lakes area okay. and right there and forgetting about some of the other areas. Huh. Um, for example, the northeast corner of Maple Grove has uh -huh. been untouched by development. I mean, I, I don't think anybody on the city council or the current mayor would, would dispute that. There just has not been okay. anything in the northeast corner. Uh, having grown up, I grew up on the east side of Fish Lake, uh, homes built in the late 70s. I've seen, uh, especially when we moved into the area, the population has tripled from 20,000 oh. to over 60,000 right. now. Right, right. Those older pockets of communities in the Boundary Creek area in Maple Grove, up by Osseo High School and Osseo Junior High in that northern Maple Grove area, uh -huh. the East Fish Lake, the older Weaver Lake areas, those are the pockets of community and the people that made it the desirable place to call home uh -huh. and the reason we're number two now and the population has grown and we've brought in businesses. Right. So I'd like to get away from so much of a focus on business and I could talk all day about tax <laughs> abatement issues uh -huh. and different things like that, but get a more focus on the people of Maple Grove. Okay. Whether it's seniors, youth, but again, the people that made it the great community that it is today. Um, so I just want to get more people involved and a little less away from just focusing on business, business, business. And let's get back to people, people, people. Do you have some ideas that you'd like to see happen that would bring the focus back to people? Or well, I do. I want to, we have obviously a citizens advisory committee right okay. now. I'd like to see that uh, more focused or, or basically broadened mm -hmm. the horizon because I think it's important to get uh, community input on all the issues um, from all different corners of the community, whether it's uh, different social areas, uh, economic areas, what have you. 
Also, uh, a big thing going out is we have a, a, a really big aging senior popula oh, population okay. in Maple Grove right now. There's been a lot of senior housing and developments, um, and we want to keep that moving forward. Uh -huh. But I'd like to bridge the gap. There's ideas, that, and I've seen this in other communities with the youth. And I'm not just talking about simple mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I look at my, my parents who are aging. Uh, technology, my dad just got an iPad. Ah. Why not take some uh, youth that are, are in the local high schools ah. and bridge those at these new senior developments and oh, show them sure. how to use technology. Skype with grandkids who may be out of state or in northern Minnesota. Um, teach them to do simple things right. like that and to be able to learn from those seniors and bridge that gap and bring people together. I think that's important. So. And then what are you hearing from people as you're door knocking? You know, basically what I'm hearing from people right now is there's a lot of focus, and I don't want to get into that, but Maple right. Grove has some city council issues that have been in the news, and okay, I don't want to, right. I'm not even going to bring that right. up or focus, but to be blunt with you, that's probably the number one question ah, I get when right, I get out there, right. is talking about that. I try to divert from that and just tell people what my message right. is. Again, and what I led in with in the introduction was what I hear mostly is people talking about, hey, let's not forget about these older pockets of the community. Uh -huh. um, again, there's there's been studies that show tax abatements for big business don't actually stimulate economic development mm -hmm. like uh, you know, selective tax abatements as opposed to just a property tax cut for all right. or incentives to reside a home or you oh, know, right. different programs that would help revitalize these older mm -hmm. communities. Um, and, and that actually has shown to actually help the community more. And again, that goes back to my message of the people, which is uh, when you offer tax abatements to certain businesses, you're really rolling the dice on somebody who's not uh. vested in the community. <laughs> yeah. What happens if the market changes? What happens if there's a new scientific breakthrough? Uh, what happens if, for example, on a state level, Medtronic leaves Minnesota mm -hmm. for tax purposes, what right. have you? So you're really taking a gamble on, on people. Uh, in certain situations, obviously, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Um, but in general, again, even with uh, tax issues and so forth, I'd like to see that focused more on the people. Okay. And then I'm going to have you first tell us, or tell the voters of Maple Grove why they should vote for you. Sure. Again, I th I, I'm vested in the community and I don't say that lightly. Um, uh, I, I've grown up here. I've lived here. I wanted to bring my family mm -hmm. back down here. Mm -hmm. My wife isn't from this area. Ah. But it's a great, fantastic place to live. And I think that the Money Magazine article shows that. Mm -hmm. And really what I want to do is bring somebody who's been in this community from the beginning, back when we were just under 20,000 uh -huh. people, who has seen all the growth, you know, the agricultural land turned into all these developments, and who really is truly, again, not to beat a dead horse, vested in the community. Right. Um, and I think my background and working with other things makes me uh, the best candidate for the job. Okay. And then briefly, what's something about Maple Grove you don't want to change? You know, I think, uh, I think that what I wouldn't want to change is our park and recreation uh -huh. system. And I, I mean, I, that's part of the draw that kept me in the uh -huh. community. Uh, and I look back at some of our previous mayors. We had James Dean, who was a mayor for many years, <laughs> was one of my teachers at Osseo High School. And uh, just the vision and foresight that he had to start that trail program to uh -huh. keep the the Arbor City and make us a tree city. You drive down some of these older developments right. and see the older mature trees and it's it's beautiful, mm -hmm. it really is. The foresight of some of those uh, previous people to put forward the parks and recs and make them what they are today. We've got people who cross country ski at night and come from all over the metro to use that trail system uh, in the Three Rivers Park District. Um, and uh, so I think parks and probably recreation okay. are what I think are really positive okay. that wouldn't change. And now we'll move on to Mike Elliott and we'll remind you out there if you're in Brooklyn Center be sure to take down his phone number and email so you can be in contact with him and we'll let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience but sure. especially to the people <coughs> in Brooklyn Center. Yeah I am just delighted to be here mm -hmm. so I really appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so my name is Mike Elliott and uh, I'm running for Mayor Brooklyn Center. I uh, uh, went to Palmer Lake Elementary Mm -hmm. and uh, graduated from Brooklyn Center High School ah. Yeah, uh, in 2003. Um, I can still remember, uh, I think in ninth grade, walking up the stairs of City Hall to get a, a permit so ah. we could do a car wash um, yeah. at a shopping uh, a mall that you know is no longer there now, over on 57. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, 
I have a background in international management, okay. from, uh, a degree from Hamlin University, mm -hmm. uh, and a background in economics and political science. Um, I'm a 17-year member of the Brooklyn Center community. Uh -huh. I uh, served on the Brooklyn Bridge Alliance <clears throat> and uh, the Brooklyn uh, Peacemaker Center Board mm -hmm. um, and with uh, Dean Nyquist, uh, uh, who, who is no longer with us. Um, and I also currently serve on the Board of Directors uh, for SEEP. Okay. Um, I'm the founding advisor for the Brooklyn uh, Youth Council as well. Uh -huh. So I uh, formed and created that youth council. So you've been involved in lots of different ways. Absolutely, yeah. And now we'll move on to issues, issues that are facing Brooklyn Center that are of, of particular concern to you as you're going forward with trying to get elected as mayor. Yeah, you know, this is something that I, I come across a lot, you know, uh, when I'm door knocking, folks are talking to me about, you know, their concerns. Um, but if you look at our city, uh, we have really fallen behind compared to our, our neighboring cities uh, okay. in Brooklyn Center. We've got a rich history of uh, a very rich, vibrant history of being the shopping uh, center, uh, you know, for the area. Uh -huh. We've lost uh, almost all of that now. <clears throat> and one of the, the problems that we have now is that we've got all these, uh, you know, we got businesses that are coming in, but they're, you know, ultra low wage jobs okay. that are coming in. You know, that's a real problem for our families, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we know that in order, in order for our kids to be fine, our families got to be able to make enough money. So, right. so that's a problem we've, we've got to address. It's not just enough for us to have some development. Mm -hmm. We've got to look at the net effect of that development, and it's got to be positive for our families. Um, that's, that's one issue. The other issue that, um, you know, a lot of the city council people will tell you that it's not their issue. They'll say, hey, it's a school board issue. <laughs> and that's the issue of education. Okay. Right? Uh, right now, if you look at Brooklyn Center High School, the building, over 80% of the kids are failing reading, math, or science, or a combination of mm. it. That's a, a, a problem, <laughs> and, and it's, it's a long-term problem, right? Because what happens when those kids graduate, you okay. know, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, you know, and, and if folks, kids aren't graduating uh, and entering the workforce with the kind of skills they need, uh, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a homeowner looking to buy a home, okay, you're gonna look at the schools if you've got kids, and you're gonna say, are the schools good? If the schools aren't good, you're gonna buy your home elsewhere. So that that's, has a, that's a problem, right? For the city council then because that affects the kind of revenue that we can get from our property tax base from homeowners right if you've got fewer homeowners you've got less uh, mm -hmm. revenue coming in businesses will look at the schools and they'll say well if 80 percent of the kids are failing reading math and science then the workforce isn't educated we can't locate in the city mm -hmm. that's a problem for city council because okay. then that dries up your tax base so one of the things that we have to do this next mayor of brooklyn center has to do is you have to be able to have a systematic view of the city and you have to be able to understand and appreciate how all the pieces are connected okay and that that's definitely what i want to do so we've got to tackle our issue of education uh, we got to provide more supports uh, more support uh, for our families and our in our kids uh, more opportunities for our young people in the city we've got to also make sure that we're uh, diversifying our, uh, our our businesses okay. um, Two prongs. Uh, I've got a two prong approach. One, I want to make sure that we're setting up a uh, small business development center. Okay. And this is really an opportunity for us to grow our economy locally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people in the city have entrepreneur. They're entrepreneurial. They've got mm -hmm. business ideas. They've started businesses. We want to help them establish and grow their businesses right here in Brooklyn Center. We're famous for growing crop, and while well, the new crop is growing businesses <laughs> in Brooklyn Center, and then number two, you know. Uh, what I will do as mayor is set up a, uh, a, a business task force whose job it is to identify the kind of businesses that residents want in Brooklyn Center and then go all around the country uh -huh. and identify those businesses and those companies and provide, you know, uh, recruit them to come into our city. You know, those are the kind of proactive things that we need to do to make sure that we're shaping our destiny, we're shaping our path, and we're not just sitting behind and letting things, you know, happen as they are and in the meanwhile, falling behind our, our, the, the successes of our, of our right. neighboring cities. Right. And then I'll ask you too, what are you hearing from people? Because you've got things you want to tell people, but what are you hearing from them when you're knocking on the doors? You know, I, I, <clears throat> I hear uh, uh, from people very, very often, 
you know, last night I was door knocking and I talked to a gentleman. Uh, uh, he got uh, he got laid off uh, just before he could retire. <clears throat> His company went under, and he had to go from you know twenty something dollars an hour to trying to find some minimum wage income. Uh, you know, thankfully his wife uh, was still working, uh, but they're you know they're struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to uh, a young lady who actually lives in my neighborhood. Uh, she and her husband uh, they are struggling as well. She's you know. Um, uh, in her 20, late twenties, but you know she's she's an injured injured mm -hmm. vet, you know, and so they're they're struggling to try to to try to make ends meet. They're struggling with with health care, with with the job market, uh, and then in in some cases, uh, you know the uh, the uh, fees and penalties from from the cities, uh -huh. you know, from the city government, from you know for things that they're working to already take care of. You know, they told me that they bought they bought the home. There was an old shed in the back and. You know, the assessor came out there and said, "You've got four days in the middle of winter. You got four days to get rid of this, um, or else we're going to give you a fine." Now, you know, they just bought the home. You know, and and that that was already okay. there. You know, we we've got to be able to work with our residents right. um, uh, on an individual basis. You know, okay. and have compassion. Okay, and, understand. and now I want to give you plenty of time to tell the voters out in Brooklyn Center why they should vote for you come November fourth. You know. Uh, for us here in Brooklyn Center, we really have fallen behind our, our neighboring cities. We need new leadership. We need change. We need leadership that's going to invigorate our, our city, that's going to talk up our city, that's going to bring together all the various uh, uh, communities within our city. We've got the most diverse city in all of Minnesota, and we can harness that and bring our people together so that we can form a common vision and a way forward. With me as mayor, we're going to be, uh, Mayor Lundy, we're going to be in competition, okay? We're, we're going to be first in jobs. We're going to be first in education, all right? And, and, and we're, one of the things I want to make sure that we're doing is we're looking at the overall quality of life for our residents. You know, not just, you know, what kind of revenue right. do we have coming in, but how, how are people living? And then what would you not want to change about Brooklyn Center? Like May Lundy said, you know, Brooklyn Center has a very rich history. Uh, we've got uh, a history of innovators in our, in our city. Uh, Earl Brown uh, started the, uh, the state trooper uh, right. Yeah, you know, right. program. So uh, we need to build on that. You know, uh, we've, we've got a lot of people in our city that, that, that are uh, trailblazers. Uh, we need to build on the rich history of our city, and then we need to embrace the great diversity that we have here mm -hmm. so that we can uh, uh, form a new path forward to prosperity for our residents. Okay, well, thank you thank all you. for taking time out of what's a very busy schedule, <laughs> I know, because there's a lot to do when you're running for office. Yeah. So we appreciate your being on our program. And then we want to tell those of you out there that we hope that you're taking uh, some time and effort, starting with our show, to gather information about the candidates that are running in your particular city. And also, we want to encourage you to check to see if you're registered to vote. If you're not sure, go to the Minnesota Secretary of State site, and there's a whole segment that will give you lots of information there. They'll, they can give you information on where your polling place is by putting in your address. You can put in and find out if you are currently registered to vote, because there are some requirements if you haven't voted for a while. You can register to vote on election day. Go to that site if you've got any questions about voting so that you'll be ready on November 4th to vote, and most particularly that you'll take the time to gather information about your city council and your mayors. We're glad that you're with us, and we hope you'll join us again next week. Bye.